Hello friends, this video on motion and time part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that uh, we spoke so much about motion, I think the basic concept of motion is getting clearer to you. So now we will see how do we graphically represent motion. This is going to be interesting and this is also going to be new. Now before we talk about graphical representation, what do we mean by graphical representation? What are graphs? Now, have you ever uh, seen a graph while going through a newspaper or all over the internet? So graphs are nothing but pictorial representation of data. So let us uh, take an example. Let us say that the teacher in your class, uh, she asked the students which is their favorite fruit. Now there are several fruits available. Some of the, some students like apple, some like oranges, some like grapes, some of them like banana. So different students have different choices. So now there are so many students in the class. So let's say there are almost 100 students in the class. Now some said apple, some said orange, some said banana. Now it is very difficult to represent this data. So how to represent this data? So graph is a, a pictorial representation or it is a diagram that shows relationship between two different quantities. So what are the two quantities in this case? The number of students in the class, that is how many students said they like apple, how many students said that they like grapes, how many said that they like mango. So basically number of students are, is one variable and the other quantity is the fruit because some like orange, some like apple, some like banana. So with the help of these two quantities, that is the number of students and the fruits. So taking these two on two different axes, we have plotted a graph. So now with this graph, you can very easily determine how many like apple. So here you can see that 50 students like apple. Again, you see mango, around 40 students like mango, 30 students like grapes and 20 students like banana. So with this graphical representation, it becomes become easier to indicate or to display this entire data. Otherwise, what you could have done is now, as I said, that's now since there are hundreds of students, more than 100 students in the class, then for each student, you will write, okay, this person likes apple, this person likes banana, again, this person likes apple, this person likes grapes and so on. So to make the representation clearer and easier, graphical representation is often used and this is known as a graph. So what you see on the screen is nothing but a graph. Now you would have seen these kind of graphical representation in the newspapers also. In a newspaper you would have often seen that the weather reports often have graphs showing how the weather changed in the past couple of days, how the temperature changed in the past couple of days or in the last month or how the temperature is changing in different cities. So. You also have would have seen graphs in the stock market news where it says that how the price would have decreased or increased in the last few days or last few years. So graphs are something which are very commonly seen in the newspapers as well. So if you want, you can actually scan through your newspapers and see where you can get a graph. Now, the question is, what is a graph? So it is a diagram that shows relation between variable quantities. Now, what are variable quantities? That is quantities which do not remain constant. That is, they keep changing their values. So in the previous example, I took the example of uh, the number of students and fruits. So the number of students also changed, like for apple, it was 50, for banana, it was 20. So it, it changed, so it was a variable quantity. Similarly, the fruits also changed. Somebody likes apple, somebody likes banana and so on. So, and those two variable quantities, there was a relation between the two and which was shown by the graph. So here, let us take another example of a car. So let us say when this car moves, what happens? As the car is moving, its position is changing. Therefore, the distance covered is also changing. So when the car was here, 
it had covered no distance when the car reached here it had covered this much distance now the car is here so it has covered this much distance so as the car is moving so the distance moved is also changing and the time is also changing maybe when it was here it was only say it only took 5 seconds by the time it reached here it took maybe 30 seconds again when as it moves forwards the time also changes so basically during its motion at every point the time was also changing correct so let us try to plot this motion of the car in a graph so how will we do that so let us say this is the start point so this was the start point of the uh, car and let us say this is the end point okay okay so now let us assume that this car had reached a point here so when it reached a point here it had traveled one kilometer so the distance that it had traveled is one kilometer and it took 10 minutes for the car to reach here now car, the car didn't stop here i'm just taking certain instance of time again when the when the car was somewhere around this point okay so when it was here so let's name these points this is a b so by the time it reached point B, so it had traveled another 2 kilometers. So from A to B was 2 kilometers and the time which it took was let's say around 30 minutes. So I'm just taking some random values. And let's say that again from B to the last point where it finally went. So let's say this distance was another 1 kilometer from B to the last point and how much time it took to travel this much distance it was say 5 minutes okay so this is how it moved so sometimes it was moving slow sometimes it was moving fast and that's how it reached from the start point to the end point now if we want to plot it with through a graph what we have to do we have to plot a graph like this so this point is termed as the origin and this is the x axis and this is the y axis so we take distance along the x axis and which is the other variable the other variable is time because in this case distance is changing and time is changing so distance and time are the two variable quantities okay now ideally we always take time along the x-axis and we take distance along the y-axis so that is the convention that is followed. So let's say here also we are taking time along x-axis and distance along y-axis. So now the time as you can see here let's let's represent the time in this way and this time is in minutes. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and on the y-axis we are representing distance so let us say it is 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and the distance is in kilometers. So what do you see? Initially the car travels when it reaches point A, it travels 1 kilometer in 10 minutes. So 1 kilometer is here and 10 minutes is here. So basically this point. After that it traveled 2 more kilometers. So basically how much total distance it had traveled by the time it reached B. It has traveled 2 plus 1 that is 3 kilometers. Total 3 kilometers it traveled in how much time? In a total time of 40 minutes right because here we are actually measuring these values from 0 correct. But here we are measuring the value from point A. So therefore, it is 2 km in 30 minutes, you should not mark it as 2 and 30. So that will become incorrect. Because from the starting point, how much distance is had traveled till B? The total distance is 3 km. So this is 3 km and how much time? Time is total 40 minutes. So this is here. So that next point would be here. And finally, when it reaches, it had traveled how many kilometers? Total 4 km, the entire distance and the total time taken was 45 so 4 kilometers and 45 somewhere here so and then you join all these points something like this and this denotes this is known as the distance time graph 
So when you look at this graph, this graph tells you that how the particular car was moving. So at this much point, this was its speed at this point, it traveled this much distance. So this is how a distance time graph looks like. This is a graph. So here we are going to talk more about the graphical representation. We will see that what are the information that are, uh, you know, uh, like given by a distance time graph. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.